Harvest Moon is a series that has undergone quite a journey in its span of almost 20 years. Although it's had some critically acclaimed games in the series, it's also had some titles with rather mixed reviews. But needless to say, it's a series that has been very financially and commercially successful throughout all these years. In this video, we're going to be looking at the history of Harvest Moon by looking at every single main series title in its entire span. In 1997, Natsume released Harvest Moon for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. At the time, the concept of this type of game was true innovation. The game follows a young boy who must maintain his absent father's farm. And while growing crops and raising animals is a primary objective, the player can also do many other types of things such as fishing and foraging. The goal of the game was to find a balance between farm work and having a social life, because eventually interesting things may happen such as festivals and even marriage. Overall, the game instantly became a huge success, and thus Harvest Moon was born. In 1998, Harvest Moon Game Boy was released for, well, the Game Boy. So it might seem obvious, but yes, this was in fact the first Harvest Moon game released for handheld console. The game was also re-released for the Game Boy Color a few months later with, well, color. It's also worth mentioning that this was the first Harvest Moon title developed by Victor Interactive Software, which is known today as Marvelous Incorporated. Harvest Moon Game Boy was also the first title in the series to allow you to play as either a boy or a girl, and it also features an unfortunate game over sequence if you fail to meet the certain criteria. Overall, Harvest Moon Game Boy used many of the elements from the original Harvest Moon, but it was still a fresh concept by this point, and was also well loved. In 1999, the very iconic Harvest Moon 64 was released for the Nintendo 64. The game was a major step forward in the series for numerous reasons such as improved graphics and the inclusion of many new features such as many more festivals and the iconic photo album that you strive to complete. Although one of the few limitations was that you could only play as a boy once again. The game was also well known for being quite a challenge to 100% because it required you to complete specific quests and events by a certain day. And if you missed that day, you would either miss it forever and have to start a new file, or you would have to wait until the next year, thus hurting your chances of completing everything in the game within the 3 year mark. Overall, Harvest Moon 64 was a critically acclaimed game, and to this day it remains with one of the highest ratings in the entire series, if not the highest. In the year of 2000, Harvest Moon 2 Game Boy Color was released to the public. Sharing many similarities to its predecessor, Harvest Moon Game Boy, the game brought back the option to choose a boy or a girl, as well as the more simple and relaxing gameplay elements. Compared to the previous Harvest Moon titles, this game is a lot more centered on the farming and ranching aspects. The reason for this is because the goal of the game is to revitalize the land and make a profit in order to prevent the land from being used for an amusement park. Because of the emphasis on money and the farm in this game, marriage is actually not an option in this one. Overall, Harvest Moon 2 Game Boy Color was a fair game according to most people. Not amazing in what it had, but it was fair enough to the point of proper enjoyment. The year of 2000 was the first year that saw two Harvest Moon title releases. The second was Harvest Moon Back to Nature. Back to Nature is well known for using identical character models and similar graphics from Harvest Moon 64. Although the characters look the same, however, many have different personalities, families, and occupations. This usually caused a lot of confusion to players who were used to playing Harvest Moon 64. It's not uncommon, for instance, to head into the clinic, see Ellie, and say, What the f Ellie, you're a baker, not a nurse, and how is Stu your brother now? Doesn't make any sense. It's also worth noting that although the game did receive an E rating by the ESRB, it also mentioned use of alcohol and tobacco as a means of precaution to those 7-year-olds who were allowed to play the game. Another noteworthy thing is that a girl version for this game was also released in 2000. However, only in Japan. It wasn't until 2007 when the West was finally able to get their hands on the girl version, titled Harvest Moon for Girl, for the PSP. Overall, Harvest Moon Back to Nature was also met with positive reviews and also became one of the more iconic ones in the series. In 2001, Harvest Moon 3 Game Boy Color was released, which would be the last of the Game Boy trilogy. To this day, Harvest Moon 3 Game Boy Color is one of the most distinctive in the entire series due to the way the genders work in this one. Basically, depending on the gender that you choose to be, you will get different cutscenes throughout the game. But the catch is that the two plots are parallel to each other. If you choose the boy, the girl will work alongside you, but if you choose the girl, you will get her perspective on the same cutscenes instead of the boy. 
Also, each gender has assigned roles. Girls take care of the animals and animal products such as yarn, but boys take care of the crops and use all the upgradable tools. The boy is also known for having more stamina than the girl. Also, if you are the girl character and choose to get married, the game is immediately over. But if you're the boy character and get married, you can actually continue with the game and continue to work. A bit of a sexist and controversial ending, I must say. But aside from that, Harvest Moon 3 Game Boy Color was also praised due to its very unique style. Also in 2001, Natsume released Harvest Moon Save the Homeland for the PlayStation 2, which is known as the first true 3D Harvest Moon game, because Harvest Moon 64 and Harvest Moon Back to Nature are usually regarded as a 2.5D style of games. The first thing that people generally notice is the rather odd graphics, not because they're bad, but because the character models look rather out of place in relation to the surroundings and the terrain. But again, that's not a bad thing, just different than what people were used to by this point, and it did take a bit of getting used to. The story for this game begins with a typical grandpa death, and then the player learned that in one year, the land would be used to build a resort and amusement park, so the player's goal was to make the farm a success within one year. The game was also known for having 9 distinct endings depending on the choices you made throughout, but the unique part was that after finishing an ending, you could start over again but you would keep all your assets instead. The aim for this was to motivate you to try for all 9 endings eventually. Overall, Save the Homeland was met with slightly positive reviews, with criticism towards the short initial length of the game and the removal of marriage. In 2003, Natsume released Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Time for the Game Boy Advance. It was also around this time that the developer's Victor Interactive software would be changed to Marvelous Interactive Incorporated. Because the company Marvelous Entertainment had now owned about 55% of their stake, so they had control and the power to change the name of the developers. Friends of Mineral Town is known for the rather cute like Game Boy Advance graphics and its fast pace as well. The game features many fun things such as the recurring fun festivals and the entertaining social life of Mineral Town. Friends of Mineral Town was also known for being able to connect to a wonderful life, in which Van was a key character for. By doing this, the player would then be able to buy records in both games to play music from many of the past Harvest Moon games while playing. It was actually a really cool concept back in the day. Friends of Mineral Town also had a girl version called More Friends of Mineral Town, which, aside from the gender differences and marriage candidates, was an identical game. Overall, Friends of Mineral Town instantly became a fan favorite due to its rich and fast-paced nature. In 2004, Natsume released one of the most unique and interesting Harvest Moon games to date, Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life for the Nintendo GameCube. There's numerous reasons as to why this game was genuinely loved. For one, the game is one of the only Harvest Moon games in the history of the series to attempt a depiction of reality. For instance, cows will only give milk for about 40 days after giving birth, and once they stop, you must purchase a bull and get the cow pregnant again if you want more milk and the milking process actually takes a bit of time, not just like two seconds. Chickens will lay eggs, but the only way to get fertilized eggs is to purchase a rooster. Crops can only be sowed, watered, and harvested one square at a time. Time also passes literally second by second on screen, and it does not stop once inside a building. Sleeping does not always make you magically wake up at 6am every day unless an alarm clock is obtained. The examples can just keep going and going, but the point is that it is in fact different. This difference is what some people consider to be a hit or miss for people, because people were used to the typical Harvest Moon gameplay by this point, but either way, there is no denying that the developers did a brilliant job in not making it look like just an ordinary game, but instead an attempt to depict reality. Another thing to note is that there are two other versions for this game. The first is Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life Special Edition for the PlayStation 2. This version of the game had a few new features and another eligible bachelorette, Lumina. But the problem was that the game suffered from severe slowdown and lag and ended up getting mixed reviews instead. The second version was the girl version called Harvest Moon Another Wonderful Life for the Nintendo GameCube. This game was nearly identical to the original GameCube version, aside from the gender and of course the marriageable candidates. It did have a few minor differences however, such as the infamous Z cheat, which would give you 99 of most items in the game instantly, simply by pressing the Z button in a controller connected to port 3 in the GameCube. One of the only negative things towards all versions of the game was the lack of proper festivals, and that eventually, there simply isn't anything to do after years of playing, and it could get very boring for you because the game does require you to play 10 years if you want to make it to the incredibly sad ending. But overall, Harvest Moon A Wonderful Life was another spectacular addition to the series that was different yet still very enjoyable for ages to come. In 
In 2006, Harvest Moon DS was released for the Nintendo DS as the first Harvest Moon title for the console. The game didn't really introduce any big concepts and it wasn't known for its innovation. It did introduce the hiring of Harvest Sprites to make them help you, but overall, it wasn't too well loved by fans. Instead of introducing something new, this game was a chance for Marvelous Interactive to make good use of the touch controls of the DS, because this was the first title in the series for it. The goal of Harvest Moon DS was to rescue the 101 Harvest Sprites by completing various things in the game. Each set of Harvest Sprites was in their own so-called team, and different things needed to be done to rescue each different team. Some required fishing for instance, others required watering crops, and so on and so forth. Harvest Moon DS also had a girl version called Harvest Moon DS Cute. The game is actually somewhat different than the original version. In terms of story, the Harvest King is a lot more involved in the turn of events, and he is the reason as to why you need to work hard in this version. The Japanese version of DS Cute is also the only game in the history of the series to have a feature related to same-sex marriage, a term called the Best Friend System. This feature was removed in the North American version because of the unfortunate view that the West has on same-sex marriage. Overall, Harvest Moon DS received fair reviews. It was not too well praised, but it wasn't a bad game at all. Also in 2006, Harvest Moon Magical Melody was released for the Nintendo GameCube. Although the two previous home console releases, Save the Homeland and The Wonderful Life, resorted to moving forward in the graphics, Magical Melody went back to the more traditional Harvest Moon graphics at the time, which were very short and cute-like characters, almost resembling chibis. Magical Melody also went back to the more traditional Harvest Moon gameplay, and instead chose not to be a successor to the real-life simulation in A Wonderful Life. The game also allows you to play as both a boy or a girl. The goal of Magical Melody is to collect all 100 notes in the game, although only 50 are needed to technically clear the game and to the credits. The bad part is that collecting all 100 notes will only get you a very short cutscene and nothing more, and due to this, you actually feel more accomplished when you collect 50 and see the cutscenes that follow with that. The 100 notes are really only for a self-challenge. Another thing to note is that in 2009, Natsume released a game for the Nintendo Wii as well, to include some motion-sensitive controls. But the problem is that the option to play as a girl was completely removed. This was because during this time, most employees working on this sport were on drug- Oh, wait, wait, sorry, never mind. But seriously, why? Just why? It does not make any sense whatsoever. This decision led to this version of the game getting mixed reviews. Although the GameCube version received very positive reviews, almost as much as Harvest Moon 64, but not quite enough to reach it. In 2008, Harvest Moon Island of Happiness was released for the Nintendo DS as the second title for this console. The story for this one is that the player boy or girl begins with a shipwreck and finds themselves stranded on a desert island with their family. Through time with hard work and cultivation and agriculture, the player can attract more and more villagers to come reside in the island. The gameplay is also rather simplistic, similar to Harvest Moon DS, although it did receive some criticism for the stylus not being very innovative and that sometimes the controls could feel very clumsy. The North American pre-release version of the game also included a plush chicken, which was a pretty interesting move by them. Overall, Harvest Moon Island of Happiness was another average game for the series that ended up getting mixed to positive reviews due to the very awkward control sometimes. In 2008, Harvest Moon Tree of Tranquility was released for the Nintendo Wii. The character models and graphics were upgrades compared to the previous Magical Melody graphics. The story involves the gathering of the five rainbows in order to make the Harvest Sprites happy and to bring back the Mother Tree, also known as the Tree of Tranquility. The game features some rather interesting elements such as crops being planted and watered in rows of six instead of a 3x3 square. It is also the first title in the series to feature ostriches as well as silkworms. Also, the world of Tree of Tranquility is huge and this is one of the reasons why it was liked by many people. Now on to the negative and weird things about this game. For one, the game is known for being rather slow. There's many things that take several seconds in the game, even as simple as talking to a wild animal. And there's loading screens. Lots of them. A huge amount. And each one is usually at least 10 seconds long. In the long run, it can actually get quite annoying. There's also one really strange thing about this game. After having a child and having them grow up, and after completing a rather long and difficult quest, you then get the option to continue playing the game as your kid from the start again. But your character's sprite actually looks identical to the original sprite and the villagers never say anything different or unique to you being the child. You can also even marry the same person that you married when you were the parent, and you can have a child with them, which means it's incest. Because you're doing your mom or dad. That's weird. That's really weird. But overall, Harvest Moon Tree of Tranquility was another slightly loved title to the series.
In 2009, Harvest Moon Sunshine Islands was released for the Nintendo DS. The game strongly resembles Island of Happiness, sometimes even marketed as a sequel or a remake. There's even a small part of the island in Island of Happiness that also exists in this new game. The story is that a powerful earthquake struck the Sunshine Islands and it caused them to sink into the ocean. So the player's goal is to find the Sunstones and restore the islands to former glory. The controls are much better than the previous game, in that you are now not forced to use the touch controls all the time but you can actually use the buttons on the DS too. By the way, for this game, the pre-order bonus was a plush pig. Overall, Sunshine Islands had much more positive reviews than the two previous DS games, with critics stating that they finally got the DS controls right, and that the game now flowed very smoothly. Also in 2009, Harvest Moon Animal Parade was released for the Nintendo Wii. This game was extremely similar to Tree of Tranquility in the character models and the way the gameplay aspects worked. While Sunshine Islands was an overall improved version of Island of Happiness, Animal Parade was deemed as an improved version of Tree of Tranquility. The game fixed a lot of the slowdown issues that existed in Tree of Tranquility, and the loading times were slightly faster but unfortunately still existed in this one. The story of Animal Parade follows the character having to find the five harvest sprites and their respective bells in order to ring them and bring back the Harvest King in the end. The game is also well known for having an immense world and that traveling takes forever to get from point A to point B, but to make up for it, they decided to slow down the pace of time significantly. This decision was loved by some, but also hated by others. But overall, Animal Parade received positive reviews and was deemed as an improved quality game compared to Tree of Tranquility. In 2010, Harvest Moon Grand Bazaar was released for the Nintendo DS. The game was an average game overall, with nothing standing out, but at the same time, it wasn't too bad. The story is that Zephyr Town used to have an amazing bazaar called the Grand Bazaar, but nowadays, its days are numbered. You move into the town, and as always, you must revitalize the land and bring the bazaar back to its glory days. The new concept of this game is, well, the bazaar, of course. The bazaar occurs every day in a limited time, and using this feature, you are able to sell your goods to the people in the city. And while doing this, you are competing with other people who are also using the bazaar, because the top three always earn a prize. And the more money you make at the bazaar, the more it grows and the more shops will appear for you to use. Overall, Harvest Moon Grand Bazaar received fair reviews, but it wasn't regarded as the best DS title in the series. Also in 2010, Harvest Moon Hero of Leaf Valley was released for the PlayStation Portable. It was also around this time that Marvelous Entertainment announced that Marvelous Interactive would be merged with the parent company, and thus it was the end of the name Marvelous Interactive. This game is known as an enhanced remake to Harvest Moon Save the Homeland because the story is actually very similar. In this game, however, there are 16 different possible endings as opposed to 9 in Save the Homeland. Marriage is also an option in this one which helps spark more positive reviews. Aside from the easiest way of spending 50,000 G to purchase the land bag from Funland Company, you can do many other types of things to the land, such as transforming it into a nature preserve to protect animals, or a tourist destination to attract many more people to come back into the land. Usually for each ending, there is a specific different character that is the key character for the shape of events. But as always, it's usually fun to try for different endings and outcomes in different playthroughs. Overall, Harvest Moon Hero of Leaf Valley was met with positive reviews, with most noting the improvements compared to Save the Homeland. In 2011, Harvest Moon The Tale of Two Towns was released for the Nintendo DS as the last game in the series to be released for the console. It was, however, released for the 3DS a few months later. The concept of this game is very unique in that there are actually two towns in the game. In the beginning, after choosing your gender, you must choose a town to live in as well, and you have a choice from the more European-like town Bluebell or the more Asian-like town Konohana. Each town specializes in different components of farming, with Bluebell focusing on animals and Konohana focusing on crops. The player is not limited to only talking and shopping in their own town, however, and they are free to interact with anybody and even marry a villager from the opposite town. The game is also known for there being a lot of hate in the characters in the game, just because one town hates the other a lot. Overall, Harvest Moon The Tale of Two Towns received fair reviews, with critics noting that even though it did bring a new concept to the table, the execution just wasn't quite there and intriguing enough.
In 2012, Harvest Moon A New Beginning was released for the Nintendo 3DS. This would be the last title in the Harvest Moon series to be worked on by the combination of Natsume as publisher and Marvelous as the developer. A New Beginning introduced many new aspects to the series and made the game feel more like the Animal Crossing series from Nintendo. Some examples are more extensive character customization, increased flexibility for the design and furniture of a house, and the ability to customize the way the entire village looks. The story involves reviving a deserted town called Echo Village in order to allow the residents and lifestyles to return and bring life to it once again. Throughout the game, there will be a series of tasks that the player may do to help popularize the town and these tasks will unlock more events and eventually make the town even larger. Overall, Harvest Moon A New Beginning received very positive reviews with praise given to the much more improved customization features as well as retaining great farming gameplay. In 2014, Natsume released Harvest Moon The Lost Valley for the Nintendo 3DS. Before this, Marvelous was always a series developer, but Natsume was the publisher for Western localization. However, this was the first Harvest Moon game in almost two decades to not be developed by Marvelous. According to Yoshifumi Hashimoto, the head of development for Marvelous, the reason for this happening is because both Natsume and Marvelous had a different vision for the future of Harvest Moon, and after a long time of disagreeing, they decided to split up. Because Natsume was the publisher though, they held the rights to the name, and the logo as well titled Harvest Moon, which is why the Lost Valley is still called Harvest Moon. But Marvelous had to create a new name and logo for the farming series, and they came up with Story of Seasons. And they also created an American team called Exceed Games to handle western localization of the games. Many people were scared that the Lost Valley was going to be disappointing because Natsume did not have experience developing the Harvest Moon games. It was Marvelous all along. And well, people were right. The Lost Valley received very negative reviews, possibly the most negative in the entire series. The reasons for this are because the game just simply does not feel like a Harvest Moon game anymore. Instead, it feels more like a Minecraft ripoff according to most people. Although you are still allowed to customize your home and expand it, as well as talk to the villagers and eventually get married and have a kid, the main focus of the game is to change the terrain of the world and modify it, thus the Minecraft ripoff statements. Overall, The Lost Valley received very negative reviews because it was too different from what people had expected from a Harvest Moon game. In 2015, Marvelous now had their chance to show off their new game called Story of Seasons. Story of Seasons, unlike The Lost Valley, is a more traditional Harvest Moon game. The player is able to produce crops and raise livestock as always, in addition to socialize with the various characters in the game. The story of the game is that the player character is bored with their normal life but sees a flyer announcing that they are seeking new farmers. With this, the player moves to the new village and finds out that there are other farmers there as well. Through working with the other farmers and gaining new information, the player is able to prospect and make all farmers help each other out. Character customization also returns in this game, and farming has been more simplified to allow sowing, watering, and harvesting to be done in a 3x3 field automatically, instead of using one square at a time. The game also features connectivity, and through this, one is able to sell their crops and dairy products to other countries via the trade station. Personal farm data can also be swapped with others by using the 3DS Street Pass functionality. Overall, Story of Seasons was well loved and received positive reviews due to its traditional Harvest Moon gameplay, in addition to the nice new features. In 2016, Natsume released their second game titled Harvest Moon Seeds of Memories for iOS, with a future release expected for the Wii U. This was their chance to make up for the failure of what the Lost Valley did, and well, it sort of made up for it, but not entirely. Seeds of Memories returned to the roots of Harvest Moon by simplifying the gameplay aspects. Also, the graphics and the gameplay have returned to their roots as planned. The problem, according to most people, is that it went back far too much, that the livelihood and social life of the game almost feels dead. There's times when one is playing and doesn't really feel a connection between themselves and the other characters in the game because they almost lack personalities. There's also not much to do in the world because it is quite small. There are basically three areas and just three areas in the game. Your farm, the small town, and the average size mountain to forage. But that's it. The story of the game is that there is an abandoned farm to the east, but apparently the villagers forgot through time that it existed. So the player decides to take over the farm by helping the harvest sprites and the goal is to obtain the 150 memories of the game by completing various quests. These memories obtained will help bring back the memories of the villagers to remember the farm. When all in all, the player could have just asked one villager at a time to please take 5 minutes of their time to come follow the player to the farm to remember it. But it's a video game so we know that easy way is not possible. Overall, Harvest Moon Seeds of Memories received fair reviews and it was a nice improvement from the Lost Valley. The game does feel more old school again, 
but it's not completely back to the point that made the Harvest Moon series so great, so hopefully with time, they will one day get their spark back. So that was the complete history of all main series Harvest Moon titles. Like I said, it's gone through quite a journey, a lot of major changes here and there, and it's really interesting. Overall, Harvest Moon has been a really positive experience for many fans of the series. And as always, we hope that they continue to create great games. So, if you enjoyed this episode in any way, please be sure to leave a like, I would appreciate that very much. And feel free to comment on what you thought about the video, and go ahead and mention what your favorite Harvest Moon game in the series is. So, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time.